So it looks like it's the beginning of the end of Ninth Edition. A new finale campaign series has been announced. There's some dramatic lore developments in an Arcs of Omen series. A new and disturbing looking mechanical demon prince of some sort. An entire new way to play 40k with new shipboard terrain and indoor fighting missions. Some new bases and a new campaign book series. Loads to talk about, so let's take a look. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where we've been talking about the Warhammer Day previews over the past couple of videos, and alongside all the juicy new models that they showed off, perhaps one of the single most interesting things was this Arcs of Omen campaign series, which seems to be heralding news on all sorts of different fronts, between new terrain, models, rules, lore, and more. This is something that a fair few people were kind of expecting from this preview. We can draw some lessons from the previous editions. Games Workshop often tends to release all the codexes for an edition, and then once they're out for a bit, kind of winds down the edition with a concluding campaign, during which all the armies of 9th edition get to use their shiny new toys to the max of their ability. It does feel very similar to the narrative progression and timing of the 8th edition Psychic Awakening campaign, a series of books to keep people interested after their main codexes are out, and then no doubt culminating in the launch of a brand new edition, perhaps driven by the story and the model releases of what came just before. The new lore that they've got going is pretty interesting. Abaddon the Despoiler has been fighting hard for control of the Imperium Nihilus and shotting off the main Imperium on the other side of the Cicatrix Maledictum. Apparently his fleets have been launching some crusades to capture certain space hawks that have been popping up all over the galaxy. Enormous mutant conglomerations of ships, which seem to hold some dark secrets that Abaddon thinks will be his key to wresting control of the galaxy in its entirety. Apparently the main narrative arc is that a new and unrevealed character is going to be helping him claim those ships. They seem to be building this guy up to be another big bad within the 40k galaxy. It does appear that he's some sort of Dark Mechanicus Demon Prince type thing, and they've actually given us a very good picture of the model, which we'll take a look at in just a second. Kind of interesting to see where they take this, but they say it's going to be the biggest lore update since the Great Rift opening. I must admit the Psychic Awakening series had a bunch of interesting stuff for several of the other races, but maybe just didn't really feel enormously focused overall. Lots of small minor updates rather than anything else, and I guess it culminated in the discovery of the Pariah Nexus and the new Necrons. It'll be interesting to see where they go with this one though. It seems that perhaps the main thing is a series of campaign books, though it does seem to be in a different sort of style to Psychic Awakening, as they've basically said it's not going to contain core 40k rules content, so no other things like expansions or supplements or things which I think maybe has some positives and negatives, and I might focus on that idea a bit more in a future video. The main draw to them though is going to be making a 40k expansion that allows you to fight battles in close confines, basically representing indoor combat in a similar sort of way to the Kill Team releases, which I think could potentially be a fun expansion and an interesting other way to play the game. Otherwise, they said that a bunch of new models are going to be coming as well, of which this mechanical demon prince looks like he's going to be one of them. I suspect it's not going to be something for every single faction, otherwise they would have said as much. Likely some armies are going to be luckier than others. I guess we'll see what they have in store on that front. First up, and perhaps the most concrete teaser from this new trailer, is basically a rather good photo of the silhouette of the new mechanical demon prince. There was really quite a bunch of cool teaser promotion around him, this rather sinister looking mechanical skull on the top right. He casts a rather sinister looking silhouette, and he does appear to have that claw built in with a flamer and a mecha tendril type demonic hammer. So I guess we can consider those two rumor engine bits put to bed. From the teaser trailer, it looks like Abaddon discovers this guy on board one of these space hulks, and presumably he's going to be key to unlocking their potential. Knowing chaos, I'm sure that good allies are shaky allies at best. If they manage to get through the entire campaign without this guy betraying Abaddon in some way, then I'd be very, very surprised. I think it would actually be more of a turn up if he didn't. I'd guess that he's going to fill the role of another sort of Chaos Supreme Commander type figure. Maybe a Demon Prince advisor that he can ally to other Chaos armies in a bit of an Agent of Chaos type role. And he might well be the harbinger of things to come, perhaps Dark Mechanicus returning to 40k. You never know. In any case, he does cut a pretty imposing silhouette. You can see that demon hammer held in his right hand there, and that mechanical claw flamery thing held in his left. Looks like that wasn't for a new Huron model after all, and it does make a bit more sense why it was a bit more of a mechanical claw rather than a power fist type flamer. Looks like he's got some rather spindly and disturbing looking wings as well. Looks like a bit of a demon mechanical angel. I do suspect that the model's going to look very very nice once it's shown off in full. I have a feeling that they might not be too far off doing that if they are giving us this much of a look at it already. In any case, we'll certainly be a fun one to hear more about, 
Always good to have more on the horizon after the things that we know about, like World Eaters and Guard. Otherwise, they've shown off this shipboard terrain that they've got. It's a box set aimed at full-fledged 40k called Warhammer 40k Boarding Actions. Looks like a bunch of the same star terrain as the Kill Team Into the Dark box set, combined with two of the paper playing boards to make a bigger map, and it looks like they've set out their things a bit more wide and open compared with that set. Might be a bit more relevant if you're having entire squads fighting with each other as opposed to just individual models. Just looking at it, it does remind me of that Forge World Zone Mortalis a little bit. Not quite the same thing, but a bit of a different way to play 40k at really close confines and perhaps favouring certain different playstyles. They haven't told us too much as to how the game mode will be played. It looks like you'll get the rules in one of these campaign expansion books, though they did give us a couple of hints as to how it might play at the moment. You're not going to be able to use vehicles, monsters or certain other big models. So it does seem like it to be infantry swarms and beasts fighting within these confines. My guess would be that they won't be doing anything radically different with the points for 40k. That would seem a little bit over complex for a supplement. So it does look like it would just naturally favour anything that's good at close quarters already. Assault infantry and maybe close range shooting things. They mentioned units like Terminators, Aggressors, Burner Boys or Tau Breacher teams in their preview. Though I must admit it does sound like it would favour certain armies far more than others. I wouldn't honestly expect it to be too balanced a thing, but it could be an interesting different way to try out 40k, and have a very different flavour of game. If you wanted to try it out on the cheap as well, I'm sure it wouldn't be too hard to fabricate some cardboard walls or something, if you don't want to pay for and paint up an entire big crazy plastic set like this. To go along with this, they're also releasing a basing set called Void War Bases as well. These ones do look pretty cool. Sculpted metal grill type bases, and kind of similar to what a fair few other people offer online or sculpted. I think these look like a really quite cool alternative, and give you a different choice that you wouldn't necessarily get if you were just using basing sand and tufts of grass and stuff like that. Looks like it would be very nice for representing shipboard terrain or cities and things, and could provide a very nice contrast with the miniature. From looking at this picture, it looks like you get 10 bases on the 25mm scale, 10 on the 32 and 10 on the 40 plus a whole bunch of grills and bits and bobs and things to adorn the bases as well. It will be interesting to see how much it costs though, as to whether or not it's really feasible to use these on any sort of army-wide level. Looks like they could be kind of fun though, if you're trying to make some really custom miniatures, say deck out a kill team or something. Finally, and spinning back to these campaign books, they basically did give us a few details, though not that much, and I feel like the things that they're not including are almost more telling than the things that they are. I do wonder whether or not they'll have the rules for any new miniatures released in the books themselves, but there seems at least a reasonable chance that they won't. They basically said that there's no match play rules in these books, not for any of the factions, so no things like army expansions or things like that. Citing that they've received a lot of feedback that people don't like carrying loads of books into battle other than their codex. I think there's positives and negatives to that, to be honest. Less fun rules, but less pointless and easily outdated supplements. In general, I suspect it'll be a fairly popular move, though. They also said that they wouldn't have any crusade rules in the books as well, which seems a little bit more odd to me. Kind of feels like it'd be a good place for them, to be honest. Supplemental rules that aren't exactly essential towards your playing crusade or anything like that, but they could add a bit more content and value if you did want to buy the book and then play through some narrative missions in the sector. The only thing that they really confirmed is that it would have the expansions for fighting 40k on Space Hawks. I'd guess alongside probably some mission scenarios for that, maybe some ones actually tailored to the narrative, and otherwise maybe it might just be lore in the books. I'm sure the lore will be interesting, but overall I feel like the main selling point is generally going to be for the 40k expansion type mode, and it'll be interesting to see whether or not that's more or less popular than the rules that technically had current 40k rules, but were also delivered in a super annoying format. It does mean that they would seem very very passable to anyone who's just more interested in playing standard 40k, rather than whatever alternative they come out with here, but I'm sure for those who want to try it out, there'll be some genuinely good value. So anyway, let me know what you make of the campaign that looks like it will end out 9th edition. What are your predictions for what these campaign books will bring? What miniatures do you think are going to be shown off? And what lore developments do you think it might herald for 40k in general? If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics. We'll certainly keep up with Games Workshop's news, releases and rumours. I do tend to post new 40k videos most days. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel quite a bit, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that link down in the video description if you're interested in supporting. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, 
regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds interesting to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.